now. Okay, great. All right, so are we ready? All set. Okay, so we'll uh, convene the meeting as of 6 p.m. Welcome to the Brookfield Board of Selectmen. Uh, please rise. <laughs> All right, we're going to be starting off uh, top of the agenda, um, 6 p.m. with the Community Development Block Grant uh, FY21 application public hearing. Come on, join join us. Okay. Um, Go ahead and sit right there if you would announce your name and what organization you're with and what the recommendation is that's coming. Certainly. Certainly. So my name is Ian McElwee. I am an associate planner with the Central Massachusetts Regional Planning Commission. And I'm here today to discuss the upcoming CDBG um, Community Development Block Grant FY21 grant application that the town is looking to submit. So for those that aren't aware about the program, the Community Development Block Grant is a federal uh, grant opportunity for community development type um, improvements in towns such as infrastructure improvements, design planning, construction, um, social services, um, a variety of different opportunities. And the, um, what the town is looking to do is to submit an application that would, if funded, um, design and construct in road drainage and water improvements along Green Street and part of Grove Street um, in, in, the, in the town. So what we are um, today, I'm just sort of going through the um, explaining what the what we're looking to do, answer any questions that the board or any M audience members might have, and then eventually to take a uh, vote from the board to uh, um, approve the or approve the project and so that we can move forward. And as CMRPC's role in this is that we are writing the application for the on the town's behalf. And if um, voted and signed an MOU, then we will be submitting the application on the town's behalf. And hopefully, if the grant is awarded, we would then be helping to administer the grant and help um, with all of the you know, details of that program. So along Green Street, we um, had we had spoken at several meetings as far back as about 2017, 2018, with the town's community, Deve community development advisory committee, that there had been some um, road issues along Green Street that it was in need of repair, and so we had tried several times to look at that road to get it um, into the program unsuccessfully until this summer when we were finally able to get the pro get the road to meet a uh, standard qualification that the pro um, that is part of the program so that we can then apply for those funds and so what we would be looking to do would be to design um, in probably or we would um, over the summer of 2022 and then in this construction season of 2023 we would then be constructing the uh, improvements to the drainage in, along that road to repair the road surface, any uh, water main improvements that the um, engineers will have noticed, and then um, some minor upgrades to you know drop, uh, drop basins and or catch basins and um, signs and side and if, if if the design can work and the uh, residents are amenable to it then maybe putting in a sidewalk on part of the road depending on if the road is wide enough to fit this and so that is you know what we're looking to do and then um, we would be on part of Grove Street between Green and Maple we would then be extending that project to include some uh, road and drainage improvements along that little, along that stretch as you can see on the map, sort of this is what the um, approximate project area looks like. And so that you know, so that's what we're looking to do. As um, as part of the program, you know, we have to show that your existing 2008 FY18 
community development block grant projects are fully expended. We do have a letter signed from the town um, by the town administrator stating that you're not going to be making any more claims on that grant because everything is um, finished. The, that was the Hayden. That was, was the, the Hayden High project. project. Yes, yeah. correct. And so now that you know that now that that grant has been fully expended and the projects have been completed, the town is now um, able to apply for the full eight hundred thousand that you can apply in a single year um, as part of this grant. And so under the grant, I, um, I think I put a little a mini budget on your um, at your seats. We do have updated numbers from Lennard Engineering. They pro they provided a cost estimate to us, and that the um, with a 10% construction contingency, the cost to um, to construct all the improvements would be roughly 550,000, and um, the total cost with engineering and construction oversight is about 660,000 dollars. Then with some money for Central Mass Regional Planning Commission to do the procurement of the um, designer and construction um, contractors along with some grant oversight, that would get us up to the um, 800,000. That, and so the CMRPC cost, that's a little bit on the higher end. We um, are still looking and crunching some of the numbers on our end to see what the total cost would be for Central Mass to administer the grant. So I expect that that number will go down some. It will. Um, say that, that looks higher than it has been historically. That yes. Yeah. So um, we just sort of I put on the higher end right now, just because we don't have that final number in place, and I didn't want to under I didn't want to say a certain amount and then have to come back and say we need to request a little bit more. So it'll definitely be coming down from what I um, had put down there. So the final number we will um, it will be back in front of the board when we submit the application with the final the number of, uh, that is being requested. So expect that, expect that number to go down. And so with that, um, that is sort of what we are proposing to do. We had talked a bit about uh, maybe if there were some funds available to do some housing rehab um, program or to do some units of housing rehabilitation. Unfortunately, because of the cost of the project, um, and all the, the we got from the engineer, we're not going to be uh, pursuing that this year, but maybe next year or in a future grant if the town still has interest and there still is interested within town to do some more housing rehab units, we can definitely bring that program back. But you still have an existing grant as part of North Brookfield's FY20 application or FY20 program mm -hmm. to do some housing uh, rehabilitation in town. So that so that's still ongoing. That. Um, do, do we know what the what our remainder is in terms of the housing rehab from the North Brookfield Joint Grant? So there's a roughly seven units budgeted, and that program has is really starting to come up and running. So uh, I don't think anything has happened with that grant yet, but um, it's still in its early early days. Okay. Can I ask a few questions? Yeah, please. When does this grant open? When does the grant? Is it open now and that you can apply at any time or is it yes. opening in September 15th? No, it is open now that we can apply. The deadline is September 10th. Okay, is it a first come first serve or competitive? It is a competitive application. All right, um, if you were to receive the grant, when is the award gonna be issued? We expect that the grant will be announced and awarded probably in December or January. Okay. Once it goes to the state, they have their own timeline of uh, reviewing of reviewing the applications. So all things being spectacular, and we get the $800,000, what's your projected timeline for going out to bid? Going out, so we would be looking to go out to bid for an engineer late winter, early spring with a, um, and we can talk with the Community Development Advisory Committee as well as other uh, members in the town to see how you want to do the procurement, if um, which style of procurement you want to go for. That the design will then start, I'm guessing, mid to late spring, and then that would probably take them through the summer, and then we would be going out to bid for construction in the winter of 22 to 23, 
for the start of the construction season to start construction at the start of the construction season in 2023. And we're looking at a potential how long do you estimate the project will take? With so Spur Street. Breaking ground in spring of 23, are we looking at it'll be done by fall of 23? Or yes, it's a single. Done yeah, by that's a single season build. It's and that would be similar in scope to what they did at Hyde and Hayden. I okay. think that that yes. was, was that done in one construction season? That was, that was done in a single construction season, and we, I don't see any reason why this would be a multiple construction season project. Okay. Okay. The road is about 750 linear feet, so it's okay. not a very large project and and really fundamentally the design none of the design questions would be answered yet in terms of, of what type of drainage versus tie into you know, mm -hmm. tying into yeah the water system versus or the the runoff system versus catch base mm -hmm. and, and, and above ground or yes so the yeah, none of those questions I really have an answer to because that'll be through the design process okay. But we do foresee, you know, we will be engaging the community throughout the design process, throughout the construction process. We'll be, you know, bringing this to town to a, you know, meeting, public hearing to see what the design, and so that there's input on the final design of the project. And we, so we'll be engaging the town throughout the entire, um, throughout the entire thing. And is that part of your management of the, yes. of the grant is to schedule and conduct the um, public activity yes so that is that's part of our management plan for the for the grant okay any additional questions okay now where did this fall on the on the rank order because i know that we had a cdbg overall plan submitted to us what about eight or nine months ago, where did this fall on kind of that punch list of projects that was part of the town's overall plan? It was in the top um, one or two of the projects. It, it has been sort of on the list of, you know, projects they want to get done that, you know, we could feasibly look to do. Okay. Um, and what were the ones that were, were, did this, was this selected above, fundamentally? This was selected above looking to do a second phase design and possible construction of some water improvements along Draper and High Street and the um, to looking to do some brownfield remediation at the Finney property. Okay. That that project had some more questions that needed to be resolved about yeah, ownership that, yeah, and that, use. That, gonna, that, that one's <clears throat> probably still gets a lot of outstanding questions about mm -hmm. Okay. All right, that makes sense. What, did you have any questions? No. Okay. I, I'm, good, I'm good with everything. I know I'm pleased to see that we are going to be um, submitting an application to fix Green Street because we've had problems it's down there on Green Street years. probably for 25 years or better. And, mm -hmm. it's, and it's good. And so was the qualification requirement getting a, enough uh, ver verification that the area was eligible under the, the income yes. levels and such? Okay. Yes, we had to meet certain income thresholds and we were able to get that this year. Okay, great. Awesome. Any questions? It is a public hearing. Any questions from? Uh, so in the write-up I see that it says design and construction of road and drainage improvements on Main Street. It does include water as well, is that correct? It does include, yes, it includes, let me triple, triple check this. Yeah, because it's not, it's not specified in the memorandum of understanding, but. Okay. Um, yes, so it, it does include water improvements. Okay. Now, another question now. Do any of these grants or anything, do they include anything um, with septic systems or anything? So septic systems can be um, rehabilitated under the housing rehabilitation program. Okay. I, I don't really have very many specifics on that, okay. um, but that, it, that does qualify. 
Yeah, I, I know it's been a problem down there for many years with the septic mm -hmm. systems on that street and with the drainage. Yes. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the problems throughout town is we just have bad dirt. Yes, but this Green well, Street is worse. Yeah. No, Green Street's worse. worse. Oh, no, I, I'm not yeah. arguing it. I'm, I'm saying, <laughs> I'm saying we, have, we have lots of that, but yeah. you're absolutely right. Yeah. Green Street's got its, yes. got its yeah. own. Mm -hmm. it's yeah. own this, this program that will only um, stay within the public right of way. Okay. We, we don't, um, there's no anticipation that to be going onto private property, yeah. with the exception of maybe some very minor, like, you know, going on a foot and then. Well, and it may be a case of like, and if, if we, depending on the scope of the project, if they need it for the sidewalk, mm -hmm. they might pursue some options if, if homeowners are willing and cooperative. Yes, yes. They'll, that'll so be. So there's potential for easements? I will say maybe because. If you, it, if you can't get a sidewalk within the road layout, not No, we're, no, we're, yeah, we're, we're not going to do any, you know, domain any sort of easement control, I, I don't foresee that. Um, I, I only say that they'll look at sidewalk just to sort of cover all of the bases of what the, what the design might look like, and that could very well be a alternative, but... Um, okay, well, and, and I wouldn't object to them trying to figure it out in terms of design, even if we couldn't execute it, because there may be some options in the future to go after, like, complete streets or something to... To, that would allow us to go for easements and the like in order to, yeah. to get the sidewalk in. Yeah. Okay. All right. Any other questions? I just want to thank the C CDBG yes. uh, grant committee because, I mean, they do a lot of yes. good work and mm -hmm. ensure that, that we've got a direction to go uh, with regards to these. So. I did recognize the project. I, I just wanted to just double check where we were in terms of punch lists. So. Yes, yes, I understand. Okay. Um, so can I get a any any other questions? What do you need to do in order to close out the public hearing? So, um, which, however you standardly close standard close out a public hearing, and um, just if you want to take a vote to say that you approve the projects and to move forward with that, or um, I. On the little list that I provided, there is some language, but you can tailor it to however you see fit. I'm sorry? What list? Oh, we on the list? Sorry, I thought that was a good Oh, it's in my folder. Oh, it's in my folder. It's in your folder. Oh. It may have been in my folder and I didn't look, so yeah, shame on me. Oh, we. I was gonna say. Second, I was worried. I was. I thought that I sent. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. I knew I had sent it. Okay. <laughs> okay. So the numbers on your this paper don't match the numbers on your budget, as far as the total cost. So I'm just curious. Because when I um, when I Good. had written this up and sent it to Karen uh, to make sure that it got in the packet, we hadn't received the final um, cost estimate from the from Lenard Engineering. Okay, so and I can give you a copy of the um, the detailed cost estimate if you would like. Sure. And I've got some extras in my folder. Is that, is that this one? It, no, it's not this yeah. one. Okay. I'm just taking a glance at it before I had it handed down to you. Now, which one is that? This is what constitutes the um, Do we have a copy the 549. Of we don't have oh, additional no. copies of that, okay. but we should get some. I can. I'll send Karen an email um, well, uh, with the attachment. We can keep and that and then photocopy. Yep. Yeah, and I've got some extras. <laughs> okay. Yeah. We can make copies. Okay. So. Thank you. But his short budget is based off of that one. Okay. I still don't understand why in this day and age people can't use the zoom on the copier when they make the first copy. Right? <laughs> I mean, seriously. Our printer, our printer has been acting okay. up. I know we want to send these glasses and us, don't they? I know we want to save trees, and but. Anyway. I can actually read it, but it's 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 a challenge. Yeah. So. It is. 
All right. Okay. So, so what I would recommend is that you take a formal vote to uh, that so we're going to go forward with the yeah. grant application and are in favor of the project. Okay. So can I get a motion? Uh, you have a you have a motion that uh, we're going to go along with the grant process with the Green Street project and with the application for um, the grant. Okay. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Copy. Yes. Yeah, we'll get so, a copy and get you the original. Uh, that, what one? Or you can just you can scan it. There's there's there was something missing in there that didn't spell out the water. You know that's a good point. So why don't can, we, can just we get take that? a look at that and we'll we'll work that detail out and then we'll sign it once we get that in. Sounds great. Okay. Yeah. Here, I'll send that down to you. Yeah. Make sure it's enunciated exactly. Yes. And so um, the only remaining thing that we'll need for you is to sign the cover sheet for the application that um, is a require that's a requirement. Okay. Is that something that you would like to do at a public meeting or is that something that you can come in to the office and do? I can come into the office and do that. Okay. So I think unless there's any objection. If you've already you just voted it. to approve the grant yeah. process so you don't need any further votes to yeah. So no. yeah, just okay, if you can get good. it into the office, I mm -hmm. can swing by. Okay. Typically, typically I can get in um, prior to 8 a.m. in the morning most days. So whatever day you're going to get it here, if you let me know the day prior, I can swing it in the morning. Okay, sounds good. Yep. Or in the evening, but not generally not in between. No, so. I understand. <laughs> Well, thank you all very much. Thank you, sir. Thank and you so, do we need to too. do we need to officially close the public hearing then? So, can I get a motion yes. to close? I'd the like to um, close the public hit the hearing at six twenty-two. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Okay. So we have reports and minutes from the other departments. Uh, we've got the highway department report. Um, indicating the activity uh, week by week uh, from the highway department. Mm -hmm. um, did you want me to review any of the details in this, Linda? Or? No, I, I just yeah. scanned it now, everything they've done. Okay, great. I so, think it's fine. Can I get a motion to uh, accept the minutes? Okay, you'll have a motion to accept the minutes of the uh, highway department for June 2021. All right, second. All in favor, aye. aye. All right, great. Um, so policy Isn't review. that your minutes you were supposed to be approving? I'm sorry, that was, it, that's actually the monthly report rather than minutes. Okay, so the monthly report, yeah. I didn't get a, I didn't get a hard copy of the minutes that were approving. There, there are no minutes because I didn't do any on vacation. Mm. Right. So. So. Okay. Yes. So. Um, yeah, we should use the proper words for things. Mm -hmm. Apologies. That was the, the highway report, but, uh, <laughs> we have accepted it. In excruciating detail, actually, so if anyone wants to know what the highway department is up to, the monthly report has got a, a, a level of detail that uh, um, makes it clear what's going on. So, all right, um, moving on in terms of old business, we've got policy review, and uh, as part of that, we have two job descriptions. The one I wanted to take up first was the custodian. Okay. Um, so it looks pretty straightforward. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, did anybody have, did you have any concerns regarding it? The one concern that I did have is that there doesn't appear to be any type of um, like, like lifting or, or weight related uh, comments in here. It says you have to be able to lift 50 pounds. Did I miss it? Oh, there it is. Oh, yes, it's, oh, it's right, right there, there at the end. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's in. Got it. Perfect. No, it looks fine. Okay. Um, 
motion to no. accept? I will make a motion to accept the job description for the custodian. Great. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Um, principal accessor. And uh, Kelly, I know we had a, a little bit of an exchange mm -hmm. um, that this is predominantly taken like pretty much straight out of the Mass General Law information yeah, relative to the all position. The different legal references for each one mm -hmm. of the requirements. These are these are the state's requirements for a principal assessor. Right. And then um, Al went over it. He did. He did. Okay. Um, he made it, an effort to do that for me today, which was very very nice. That was good of him to he do. He went that. over the top to do that, so that was extremely appreciated. Um, and he agreed with. What you saw, the only thing that he has to change is under competencies, the third bullet. Must be capable of using camera software. And I put in other necessary software because there are other softwares that yeah. are entailed in, um, in doing the assessor in work. Doing assessor work. <laughs> it initially had the current software's brand name in it, which I took out because that way we don't have to change the job description if we change the, the software, software down the road. Okay. So. So, and, and CAMA is a generic term then? Yes, it's computer assisted mass appraisal. Yeah. Okay. It, it's from the Department of Revenue. All the assessing programs yeah. are CAMA systems. Mm -hmm. So it Got could it. be Vision, it could be Patriot. Yeah. In our instance, it's Tyler. It's just a computer assisted yeah. mass appraisal system. So, again, I made it generic so that we don't have to change it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. But is he using all the Tyler? Mm -hmm. yeah. He is. I thought he was, yeah. Okay, great. Everything looks fine. Yeah, so. I side went over it early. I'm just yeah, that's, that's good. And I appreciate the fact that you, that you coordinated that with Al because mm -hmm. it just, it didn't feel right not to have where we had well, the opportunity to have him review it. I was, I was under the mis misunderstanding that all of this had already gone through everyone because when the job descriptions were compiled, the people from the Collins Institute the Center, Collins Center. Yeah. had gone and discussed and gotten the job descriptions from the people who were fulfilling well, the tasks. They did. I don't think we ever did a really good job, though, of back briefing what we got back. Mm -hmm. I think some of it got pushed out as part of the general report and it yeah. went to the personnel committee, but I don't think we ever really sat down with the people no. whose jobs yes, I know that, that now, so I will be floating these by the different yeah. departments. But the Collins Center did go in and they talked to. Um, each and every one on the job They did, but none of them saw the final job description oh, to make sure that it was okay. accurate. Right. So, right. for instance, if you look at your original mm -hmm. for the asset principal assessors, you can see that it says town clerk everywhere in it because they were using probably this the template, template yeah. and then didn't edit it out completely, okay. which is... Well, Flappy this word. one yes. has so okay. many changes, and I put in the statutory references so there would be no confusion okay. that this isn't something that Brookfield is singularly requiring. This it's is state standards. This is state yeah. standards for this position. Right. Right. So. And I think overall, and it's one of those scenarios where a lot of what we got back was good news from the Collins Center, mm -hmm. but, but parts of it had some had some gaps because I think they got very compressed for time near the end because there wasn't a lot of cooperation in some spaces. So, okay, so uh, motion. I will make a motion to accept the, uh, to accept the, uh, what about here? the job description of, for the, uh, in the assessing department for the principal assessor. Okay, second, all in favor? Aye. Aye. So the next, uh, we'll get into new business. So we've got um, the potential for, I guess there's, they're in the process of selling. Uh, Maybe this is the gentleman. Mm -hmm. This with regard to Jay Road? Yes. yes. It is. Great. If, when you come up, if you can just introduce yourself. Certainly. I did sign in earlier. Um, yep. I'm Padgett Bertie. My brother Damien is the one who sent you the correspondence. Okay, great. And we represent um, the stewards who are sellers of this property. Okay. 
And so fundamentally, in a nutshell, they're, they're the sellers and they've got a 10 acre parcel, most of which is um, well, they actually have a, a parcel that's much larger, but in June of this year, they uh, separated off a 10 acre piece of that, had a, a plan approved for it, and now they're interested in selling that 10 acre parcel as part of the statutory requirement. Uh, the town has a right of first refusal uh, mm -hmm. to match the offer that's been made. We gave a copy of the purchase and sale agreement and all uh, associated documents that are required by statute. And if the town is not interested in exercising the right of first refusal um, to purchase that property on the same terms as the as the purchase and sale agreement, we've given a uh, notice of non-exercise of right that can be signed by the select board. Okay. Historically, we we don't have any real funds to mm -hmm. address pursuing it, but if you want to flip through the package. And it was provided to the assessors and CONCOM and, and planning in the state forester as well. Okay. And they did, there's 37 and a half acres, give or take, that is going to remain in chapter after this, and they submitted uh, the new forestry plan to go along with it. So it's not okay. not substantially all of the property. Okay. So fundamentally, in essence, four-fifths of it is staying? Yeah, about Yeah, about that. Yeah, about four fifths of his is still staying as chapter land. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, is there a overall development plan already available, or just this? It, well, actually, there there is no development. It's uh, ten acres that surrounds a single family residence, and the intention is to keep it as a single family residence. So it's the the recorded plan. Um, yeah, because they all together they're going to retain thirty seven point nine acres of this. Yep. Right. So on the on the recorded plan that was in the packet, mm -hmm. it's the the residence is here and the property that's being sold runs runs back like that. All of the yeah, remaining land is over all right, here. So is the, is the home being the house being sold and the ten acres is going to go with it? That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Now I know where the property is. Now it's it's on it borders on uh, Sturbridge. Now correct. is any of this in Sturbridge? A, a very small piece of it is. A small piece of it, okay. Not, I, I, I'm not sure that the Sturbridge, well, there's not enough land in Sturbridge to, yeah, to okay. be classified mm -hmm. independently. Okay. Any additional questions? No, no, no questions okay. at all. It's all pretty well said there. So we need a, a motion to. Uh, do a non-exercise. Okay. Um, well, we're going to do. I'd like to do a motion for the non-exercise of a right of pursuit to general laws, chapter 61A, section 14, and chapter 61, section 8. Should we maybe read this? Uh, it's probably say at least relative to. Yeah. Um, the address there. Yeah, and it's uh, relative to. Uh, it's it's for 71 Gay Road. And it's been in the agriculture and horical and forestry land liens pursuant to chapter 61A or 61R. And what it is too, then you have to go back and they have to pay the taxes for all the years. We will, we will yeah. have the assessors calculate the rollback yes. when we do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, yeah, the yeah any time there's a change in use yeah. and, we, and we pull it out, we have to pay the rollback tax. Okay. Um, I'll second that. All in favor? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. We have a couple of other ones that can sign. Okay. And just in time, sir, I think we're all set. Okay. So you have a vote. We're signing the documentation. It needs to be notarized, so um, Karen can do that right now. Okay. Okay. So I will. Right. I will. And two of the three is yeah, legal, so. Photocopy yeah. So. And if she genuinely needs my photo ID, I have it on me. So. No, I put it. We're all personally known. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> I already saw that. In, there so. you go. Well done. So, uh, while while Karen's doing that, are we okay to move on to the water commissioner? You are. So, okay. Is it yourself or is it Dennis who's going to speak tonight? Uh, great. Uh, 
Um, so the highway department um, has a complete streets grant to do Central Street, including the intersection, um, Route 9, I'm not sure how far it goes on in Maple Street, but I, that's my understanding. That's yeah, the, they, that's have two, they have two project. separate grants. One of them is a complete right. streets, and one of them is, I can't remember the name of it now, but it's some sort of hybrid funding grant yeah. when you're dealing with a state road being in the middle of a, a town road. Yeah, so we've been discussing the Central Street water main project for a number of years, yeah. and, and during COVID, everything kind of stalled. Yeah. Um, yep. Now with this ARPA money, A-R-P-A, um, American Recovery Recovery Plan Act. Yep. Um, it, it the funding is available for that project. Okay. Um, we've gone over this. Kathy has gone. Kathy Laraca has gone over this thing mm -hmm. every which way. Um, she's contacted um, a person at the state level that she knows to try to see if this is eligible, and he referenced her right back to the guidelines. Um, there isn't a whole lot we can use the money for, but that project, water infrastructure, mm -hmm. that project is eligible. Um, How much of our eligible funds will it consume? Will it take pretty much all of it? I think it's going to consume all of it. Well, we we have one payment, if I'm not mistaken, of 180, 180,000 thus far, and I think we're getting one more of 180 uh, next year. Mm -hmm. That's my understanding. I thought it was when Ryan was in here a couple of weeks ago. No, no, that's a totally Oh, that's a totally <coughs> different. Oh, okay. All right. So, so we're looking at 360 total, um, and the the projects that it can be used for, as of today, there there just isn't many. Mm -hmm. okay. the, the eligibility is so so slim. The the only other thing that <clears throat> that comes to mind, and I know that the state didn't do a great job when they did the bridge. Was, would be if we wanted to extend our water system. So we we have river. done we have done some studies inside the water department, and okay. to extend the water system today would absolutely take grant funding because we can't afford to run a uh, pipe to pick up a few houses. So we would need that funding. Right. But this that project is not eligible for this. For this. I just correct. wanted to establish yep. that. And yep. I actually really I wanted other people to understand that that's that wouldn't be that's right. The way this and, is and that's right. Although that would be a, a great grant funded project, it's not eligible for this money. This Perfect. this money that does not meet the criteria yeah. for this money. Um, the Central Street does. This project was stalled because of COVID. Um, it meets the criteria. Right. I, it was I, it already had it was it was already dry in, on it. Yep. That's right. That's right. Um, so for, for Brookfield, this is an eligible project. I know the Water Department, the Commission, we'd love to see this as a project Brookfield would choose. Um, I spoke with Lori, I've talked to Carrie and Kathy, I don't know, yep. everybody seems behind it. I hope this is something we could, oh, okay. we could do. Yeah, I'm 100% behind. What, yeah. what do you need from us? I, I really don't know. We need kind of the go-ahead for the town to, you know, for the select board to say, I guess this is a project we want to pursue. Um, that's that's where I'm at. Have you looked at the guidelines at all? Do they need anything else from us in order to start to? Kathy is waiting for feedback. <clears throat> um, she she's reached out to them with, with questions. So she got There's... she got an answer back. Oh, I don't, she did. Okay. Yeah, I so thought I didn't to her. Have an opportunity to speak with her today. So yeah. she got it. She got it today. And, well, the <laughs> answer, but the answer she got it's was a circular it's big answer. And, and it was nebulous. It was right? strictly to refer back to the guidelines. That's that's the answer she got. Is that in reference to the design? That that was in reference to the design, the whole project, and the design was part of it. Um, and and what she was told was just to refer back to the guidelines. She said. That, that her recommendation is yeah. to put everything in the design, the construction, everything, and use this funding for the entire project. Um, so, because we're not ready to spend the money, you know, I, I, I if, if you say yes to this project tonight, we're not going to spend money tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I, well, I guess we, we, I'd like to make a decision whether this is or is not a project we should pursue. So, so I, I mean. Just my thought is that if we're if we're tearing up Central Street with a complete yeah, streets yeah, highway yeah. grant mm -hmm. and all the way up to Maple Street, it makes absolutely yeah. no sense not to take care of the water infrastructure while right. we're there. Right. 
So my exactly. my assumption yeah. would be yeah. we coordinate the design, yeah. the clothes, no. the everything. So because it's our millennium. Okay. We cannot in any way cross pollinate, as I like to say. No, right. So, so yeah. what? We're, what I, I sent an email out this morning explaining that the design, the bidding, the construction have to be completely separate. So all of that has to be done independently for the ARPA money, and then the complete streets and the common streets grants mm -hmm. will be done independently. So we're going to have two biddings. We're going to have two um, design right. bills. The only thing that absolutely has to be coordinated is the timing. Well, it, well, and I think that's I think that's more what I was trying to say, and I probably didn't use my words well. Is that I guess my question would be is as part of the requirements when we send the water infrastructure work out to bid, mm -hmm. it's going to change the estimated cost based on not having to discreetly open up the roadway to do the water work versus having those who are quoting the project be aware that that road work may be occurring concurrently under a separate funding. So how do we handle that in terms of the... Of the I think we're going, to have, we're going to have to incorporate temporary pavement uh, into the water project. And we're also regardless. going to... Regardless. Um, okay. Because yeah. there's just no way we're going to get it timed that, that, that tight. That perfectly. Right, right. Okay. Um, but we will also have to have deadlines. You know, strict strict deadlines that the water project will have to happen in the spring. Right, because and, otherwise, and the gonna... water project isn't going to take very long. Okay. Um, you know, it, it might be, yeah. you know, it might be a month to, to do the water project. It's not okay. going to take terribly long, but we do have to set that at the beginning that it needs to be done before the road work. Right. Then okay. I asked Ryan to get the uh, because he has a quote from an engineer that includes water work to have it completely removed from the from the quote, quote. and yeah. if. So that there's no question that this is a completely independent project. Yeah. Because the last thing we want to do is, is have some break ground, have yeah. this work, and yeah. have to pay it back. Right. Yeah. yeah if we have a yeah. color money issue, it'll it'll turn into a nightmare. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So. So so the water department and the highway department are, are working closely together. We have a meeting tomorrow morning mm -hmm. to talk about this. Uh, okay. So that we will coordinate both efforts. They do need to be separate. Yeah. Um, so that we don't cross pollinate any of the money or confuse any of the people that are buying the money. Um, the timing will be, uh, you know, the, the water work obviously will have to be done first. Yep. Um, and the numbers that we heard were like one hundred eighty thousand dollars now, one hundred eighty thousand dollars later, and we anticipate that that will uh, will cover, cover the cost of the project. Yep. We'll use the bulk of that money. And we won't know until we get us. Correct. Correct. Right. Yeah. But, the, but the, the ballpark's right. Right. But the it question was, that yeah. was kind of looming uh, was: is does that money that we've already got one hundred eighty thousand can that be used for design? So that was that kind of. Yeah, that's what we were asking actually. Back to. Um, okay. So so. The question is, if it doesn't, then it means we're going to have to come back for design money somehow. Well, it, it appears that's not happening it, this year. It I appears don't know how that long we can sit no. that in the bank. Right. right. Because it doesn't look like we're going to have free cash certified in this calendar year. But the the no. guidance the guidance for this money, it doesn't say whether you can or cannot. Use the money for design. It's, it it kind of references to projects and the scope of projects and what makes a project eligible, but it doesn't necessarily say. You know, this eligible project it had to have already had a, des a design on file. It doesn't. It doesn't say. It, it does doesn't not say, say anything that. like that. No, it does not say that. Um, it does say that the project. It's going to remain nebulous. It's just the nature of federal money. Right. So and. And here's the thing: if it if it's not explicitly excluded, then unless someone can can find us some verbiage that excludes design, I don't see why we couldn't pursue design with that money. I would agree with that. Mm -hmm. With the caveat, you know, zoning, building law. If it's not specifically included, it's automatically excluded. So. <laughs> I don't know which side of the fence this falls on. Mm. 
I guess what we can do is I can sit with Kathy and have see if she can find me some of the referenced projects and I can reach out to those towns and see if their engineering was was already done. It was yes. already done or if it was part of the mm -hmm. project. Right, because I know conceptually the water the water main work has always been considered part of the Central Street project. Yes. I mean for as long we've been talking God, it must be Eight. almost at least ten years that we've been talking yeah. about redoing yeah. Central Street. Okay. And that it has always included doing the infrastructure underneath of it once mm -hmm. we tore it up. Mm -hmm. well, that would make the best sense, right? Yeah. Right. Of course it would. Right. Maintain your infrastructure while it's yes. open. <laughs> yeah. Fundamentally, yes. yes. So we don't want to do it twice. Well, we have to do it twice anyway, but not do it twice yeah. the wrong way. Yeah. Let's do it twice the right way. Yeah. So. so our approach to the to the board of selectmen is this: this is what we're presenting as a project to utilize these money. Well, we have half of it sitting in the bank. Well, yeah. right, right. So, yeah. So, but, yeah, I, I see what if, you're saying. And if we don't use it, we'll lose it. Yeah. Which right. Doesn't, this, which doesn't work well no. when you go to get a next grant. Right. So, so the full intent is to utilize, you know, that money for this project. Right. And so who did Kathy approach for sorting this out? I'd be lying if I said Bren, Brendan... But Brennan I, I Sweeney. just don't know. Brendan Sweeney. Brendan Sweeney. Okay, and he is B R E N N A N. I know it sounded like I threw a D in there, but it's Brendan Sweeney. Okay, and he is. He handles the federal slash COVID funding for uh, the Commonwealth. Okay. And has been the go-to guy since COVID hit. So he handled all the CARES Act money and. Okay, and he gave us the go reference the guidelines. Correct. So I'll, I'll, I'll reach out to Kathy okay. and, and get see if she can find the towns that are cities that these projects have already okay. done and been approved. So. so I'd like a motion that provided we don't find any exclusions that would stop us from moving forward on the design mm -hmm. of this project that we authorize mm -hmm. that once we've established that as fact that we'd be able to move forward. That would, that would be sad if we lost that money. Yeah, so, so. And then it would, like Dawn said, jeopardize getting another grant. Right. Well, well, you, you wouldn't necessarily, yeah. you wouldn't necessarily this jeopardize another grant. grant. This is not a grant. This is money that they're pushing oh, to, the, that, to the states and towns okay. in order to. It um, just showed up in the bank. Yeah. We didn't so, have so, so, so fundamentally, oh, okay. this was our Congress people at work in Washington saying, here is your slice of the pie for the Recovery Act for because okay. we understand that certain types of projects just as as local governments pretty much shut down yeah. and as you know contractors if, pretty much shut down no, that if this some money of this stuff wasn't, said. If it said when when this money you said it just showed up in the bank. And if it doesn't specifically say what you have to use it for. Why can't we just yeah. have the design plan done the, by an agency? Because it does. Yeah. It's it does. Only certain projects qualify for using the money. If it's yeah. not used, it has to be returned. If it has to be returned, then it goes to the Commonwealth again and then it has to return it to the federal government. I believe that's how it works. Yeah. Um, and they really don't want to do that. No. So they're really. And it didn't. It didn't just show up. Yeah. Um, this this was a. This was a planned. Yeah. This, um, yeah. I mean, we knew this money yeah. was coming. It's right, just right, a case. Right. It's just but a case that the guidelines have to apply, like yeah. we do for the the CDBG grant. Yeah. It's not the same thing. It wasn't a competitive process. We didn't have to have all of our paperwork. It, it, they gave it to us because. We said yeah. we can use that, can use and, it. right? Oh, sure. and, and it's one of those places where tax dollars actually returns real money to the economy because you wind up with a project and jobs. Yeah, and great, great project. Right, it's yeah. a great project. It actually, yes, it you is. know, it actually puts money in the yeah. in the pockets of of everybody from the guy running the bulldozer yeah. to the the folks. We've needed this project on for a long time out here. On yeah, yeah. yeah. So this is great. Yeah. Okay, so. Um, a motion to support and move forward okay. with yeah. the project. I would like to make an, um, a motion to support and to move forward with uh, the Central Street project. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 
Thank you. I'm glad you guys did the research for this. this yeah, thank you. Yeah, this is this is exciting. This is a great opportunity. Yeah. 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 Yes. Right. Exactly. He has to record it. So. And that's actually, I hate to put it this way, this is not a a fluff project. It's something that we we know has needed yeah. to get done. Yeah. And that's one of the things that made it meet the criteria. Is it's something that we wanted to do. Yeah. For an extended period of time, and yeah. we're moving forward yes. with it, and then it got shut down. And then so it got it shut down. Those yeah. criteria perfectly. Yeah. Yep. Awesome. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you, Dennis. Okay. So next on the order of business is appointments. Um, we've got some um, people who uh, have been willing to become part of the beach committee. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> And then we'll have an official beach committee. Then we'll have an official beach, beach committee instead of the ad hoc beach committee. So. <laughs> <laughs> and Jeff's just shaking his head saying, haven't we done this once before? Since last September, we tried to figure out an official or non-official. Okay. We're here. We're here. So. Thanks to you and me coming down and trying to look for Mike's series. No, 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 Mike has nothing to do with it. Them, so. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we have appointments for Jeff Clark, uh, Caitlin Servant, and Michelle Clark uh, for the Beach Committee. Uh, and their term to expire is the 30th of June, 2022. Okay, I will make the, make the motion to appoint the following people that you have just read. Okay, I'll second. Their names. Uh, yep, uh, I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Can I sign for the clerk since he's not here? You can, yeah. And that way we can. I can swear them in. If you see the other ones, Jeff, you should encourage them to come up and get sworn in for this. Until yeah, this. Until this one in, and not actually members of the committee. Yeah. So it's important. <laughs> no, no, that's what you told me. So that's what I'm saying. Gotta love it. Okay. Okay. So announcements. Um, we had the following warrants signed. Um, okay. I'll. No, that's. I'll take over. Yeah. That. Uh, okay. I'm. She. So under under the new. Yeah. Rules that you approved and, and agreed to follow, or yep. okay, I'm saying it wrong, but anyway, she's the one who reports because yep. she's the one who says, Yep, okay. I would like to report on the warrants that I signed uh, this afternoon. I had like a, I had, uh, a question on the expense warrant and it was answered by um, the accountant, so everything else was fine on it. So, um, we had a withholding warrant from 8 11 21. For $32,173.87, an expense warrant for eight twenty four twenty one for $136,513.65, a withholding warrant for eight twenty five twenty one for $32,680.47, and a payroll warrant for eight twenty five twenty one for $83,326.43. Great. Thank you for that. You're welcome. Okay. And then we had, uh, I wanted to put some thanks out there for the following volunteers who assisted in moving historical commission artifacts to the Heller House this weekend. So and that was uh, Donald Fagno, Jeff Edwards, Chris Gorman, uh, Mark uh, Raidbow, Andrew Raidbow, Don Taft, Lois O'Leary, Kermit Eaton, Carol Plum, Al Jones, Joanne Jones, Billy Jones and Kelly, I guess they recruited you into that. So thank you. Well, they said they were looking for volunteers, yeah. so I just showed up. <laughs> Good for you. Thank you for that. So uh, we do have the following openings available on the following committees. Um, have we started listing these on the website as well? Yeah, they're on the website. Yes. Yes. Okay. And they're also, I believe, on Facebook. Okay, great. So uh, advisory committee, we need three personnel. Bylaw committee, we need five personnel. Capital Improvements Planning Committee, we need four. Uh, Brookfield Commission on the Disability, we need five folks. Uh, Local Public Access Committee, we need five folks. Uh, CDBG Advisory Committee, grant related, we need one person. Personnel Board, we need two people. Zoning Board of Appeals alternate members, we could use three folks. Uh, and we're also looking for an ADA coordinator. Hey, can I join that? Um, no, I don't 
think so. you you live in Communities East, right? Communities don't have to be residents unless no. you have a specific bylaw. However, if you're going to be applying for grants and using them, there may be a conflict. So before a yes or no is given, mm -hmm. want to let look me check and see if there's a conflict yeah. first, and if not, then the board. Well, if, uh, Okay. Yeah, there's, yeah. Unless, there's no restriction, if there's only a restriction on residency if it's an elected position, unless the town has a specific mm -hmm. bylaw yeah. limiting committee yeah. appointments to yeah. residents. And I think, I think we do for some of the defined committees within the bylaws, but I don't think we have a general one that says to be a member of any committee you need to be a resident. If I remember correctly, but you probably want to double yeah. check that. But I think, like advisory, you have to be a resident. Well, um, your dad, um, Dennis, he used to be on, but I don't. We never had really anything to do with the water. Uh, well, uh, right, so but he's also what? he also we'll, yeah. We'll see, we'll yeah, that's what I just said. We never we'll had any. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Perfect. But it's nice but that you would volunteer. Yeah, we'd be glad to have. <laughs> if, yeah. if we can, we'd be glad to have you. Yeah. Let's put it that way. <laughs> Yeah, it is. Yeah, and, and a lot of times, and a lot of times we're partnering, and on that particular one, a lot of times we're partnering with other communities. So, yeah. so it actually yeah, would so make a lot yeah, of sense. It doesn't, it doesn't yeah. have yeah. to happen. It's not, it's not like you live off in like, you know, Sudbury or something. So, not today. Maybe tomorrow. So. Are any of these vacancies critical? Are there, are there any that should be kind of a priority. How long have they been empty? So personnel board is, I don't think that we have a functioning board right now. Without no, we have three people. We do have three people? Yes, we just okay. need two members. Okay, so um, bylaw committee currently doesn't exist, but we can serve in lieu of bylaw committee because it's not predicated as a requirement. Um, capital improvement planning committee, that's a discussion actually we probably should put on the agenda because I think that is we do technically have a bylaw that we're supposed to maintain one. That, that should be a priority. So that should be a so priority. That would take the priority box. That would take the priority yeah. box. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, advisory I consider a priority just because there's a, such a crap ton of work that they have to do in, with the budgets. Although some of that may get mitigated by your position, mm. Kelly. So <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> Come on. One of the core things that a town administrator generally does is well, work with the I department. Well, I'm usually doing the budget, budget completely no. on my own, <laughs> no committee. So I, and then running it by the uh, advisory or finance board after it's all done. Done. So I don't mind filling in any gaps because I won't be doing it all. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have, I have no issue with yeah. assisting in whatever way I can. Yeah. I, I always like to tell the story when I interviewed, I think you got me down at the, uh, the dump, there were eight people on spot and there were three people applying for it, so I had to beat up two other people. Right. And now we're begging people to put it on the website to get people just because we've had some turnover and burnout. Right. Well, you've had some yeah. turnover and burnout, but part of the issue is also that people were fighting over it because I think we had less alignment on what the priorities were. And it used to be really quite a bit of fisticuffs over it versus I think there's a certain level of trust that people are doing the right thing, so there's a little less. Right. Uh, well, sa sadly, sadly, good governance is not sexy, right? So. No, no, no. I said this last year. Once you've got things after three yeah. years, it should, things should be a lot smoother. I told you that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We can probably go down to seven, but again, that's you know, we'll right. have to see what comes up. Yeah. Um, so, but but it, I mean it was. I told that story to everyone. Yeah. I haven't seen the other two people since, but you know. Right. But the, the bylaw states that the advisory committee will review the budget. Yes. Not create the budget. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> But well, that, that, that has been a point of the contention yeah. for a long time. It sounds, it sounds like my hat remains the same. <laughs> so it, it does, but it doesn't. We at least have the department has conditioned that thou shalt yeah. submit a budget to some yes. centralized authority to then get yeah. it reviewed yes. and, mm -hmm. and dissected. So the advantage that you have is that they're mm -hmm. used to it being the advisory committee, um, but that since you'll be you'll have the advantage of more day-to-day -day contact. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a lot easier to haunt mm -hmm. them Plus than it is. Plus a weekly review of everything that's yeah. being spent. So. Right. Mm -hmm. so. 
Yeah, so I should have a good hand. Mary, uh, uh, Mary Lou, saying that you know so much about the bylaw, maybe you should volunteer to go on the, the advisory bylaw board. committee. Are oh. you even on to the are are even on to the advisory board? She was she, she was on well, the advisory board. You have to be on the bylaw committee because it, it'll round out your experience <laughs> with the committees. Yeah. No, I, 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 you, you've got the been there, done that part on advisory. <laughs> All right. Um, and I would like to see, actually, um, I think the ADA coordinator at a minimum needs to be a priority in terms of finding yeah. somebody to really truly fulfill that role. Well, how, do you, how do you want to go about that if it's announcing it is a good start? Right. Um, it's a volunteer position, yeah. I guess. Yeah, right now yeah. we we, we did not fund we, did, we did we did not fund the position okay. as a as a paid position. Okay. Um, so so that does put us in a bind in, yeah. in that it needs to be a volunteer yes. position for now. Yeah, probably this year. But if it comes more, we could probably you know come up with some kind of a salary for it. Right. Um, but that's something we would likely need to take to yeah. town meeting mm -hmm. in terms of yeah. the yeah. position. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, um, and then frankly, Zoning Board of Appeals, I would like to see us get at least at least one of the three alternate members because that's a that's frequently turns into yeah. a gap for us in yeah. order to be able to fulfill the, yes. the business needs of the yeah. town. Mm. Especially with the requirement that they have to all be present at every hearing in order to vote. Mm -hmm. Correct. And you don't have a quorum. Right. So right. how many is the how many are on the actual board? Is it a five member board? It's a five member board. Member five member board. So it's a five member board with mm -hmm. three alternates? Yeah, that seems a lot. That's, That's what I just saw in right here seemed to be I thought it was two. Well, they me they needed three I talked to Tim. Oh. And because I remember they had two of So the board is actually full. If it's a five member yes. board. Yes. Okay. Oh, it's full. Yeah. But they need two alternates in case somebody's not here for a vote. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Three three so I, that one I mean and I understand that having an alternate is, is important, but either full. two of them are missing, mm. they have a quorum. That's true. Yeah. So yep. that one doesn't tick off the priority box. Yeah, I can see where you come from yeah. with that. So, yep. But the ADA coordinator and the capital improvement planning committee, because yep. So there must be somebody on the capital improvement planning committee because there's four people. I think. Marty is on. What's that? Marty. Marty. Marty Banish is on. Okay, so he's the only member. Yeah, he's oh, the only yeah. existing member. Okay. Yeah. Is yeah, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Kathleen actually said she couldn't participate. Oh, I still have her on as a member. Yeah. I think technically I'm the only other member, but it's but, but the daytime meetings were just I, generally, unfortunately, most of the meetings for CIPC fell into the exact time slot that does not yeah. work for me, even when I can play hooky for my day job. So, if we were when we reconstitute it. Um, a number of the members were town employees, so it had to be pretty much during the day. Yeah. But we would just need to move the meeting to, to Thursday um, off of Tuesday and Wednesday. Because that's really the only day that I can support it. You mean like on a Thursday during the day? If I, if I have to support Thursday during the day, typically morning, yeah. like even the lunch hour doesn't work yeah. for me. Okay. So the, the one time I can generally support a daytime meeting is, is mm -hmm. between 9 and 11 on Thursdays. Uh, I didn't see a conservation commission on the list. Of it. Is that a full? Board? It's full. Yeah, they're a full board. Now. They are a full board now. All right, all right, good, good. All right. So, full and getting trained. What's that? Thank you to Sue Rogan. She did. Yes. She did an amazing job. job. Yes. Yeah. Broken. Broken. Yeah. 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 Sorry. My bad. Yeah. So we, we we got it we got it staffed back up again, and yeah. she's doing a, an amazing job getting. She's incredibly yes. responsive. Every time I've emailed mm -hmm. her, I've gotten a response almost immediately yeah. within within a very short amount of time, which is hugely appreciated. Yep. Yep. 
Yeah, that's she's, yeah, that's, that's yeah. a nice... So was on it, she, she was on it quite a few years yeah, ago. Yeah, so... so and I've and and actually that. had that same experience with almost everybody that I've emailed pertaining to any town business. Yeah. yeah. Everybody's been extremely yes. responsive and very impressed with well, That's nice yeah, to The hear. folks who are engaged are very yeah. engaged. Yeah. Yeah. I'm very impressed with that. So, and once I yeah, actually managed to... Un, once I actually <laughs> managed to get in under the password that you gave me, then I, I will start <laughs> responding to email as well. Thank you. Excellent. Although I had to change it quick because I also got fished, by the way. So warn the town employees that there's a bunch of Outlook phishing emails, and one of them was good enough that even I fell for it. So I went in and... No. Yeah. And I'm usually pretty sensitive to that sort of thing. Did you check the email address? I usually do, and I failed to because it was right after I had reset. Yeah. So I went in and reset again. So I think I gave them the old one. I... I, I fixed it within about probably about three minutes of having okay. having done it, so um, it should be okay. But just warn everybody that there's a bunch say, coming yeah. through. So I'll admit it in 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 the favor of at least keep maybe keeping somebody else from doing it. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, that's it. That's, that's all it. for the agenda. Okay. So. It is. I would like to make a uh, motion to adjourn at 7.05. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Jeff, this is, this is like after.